So Jared is going to talk to us about uh, port scanning. If you don't do port scanning to password cracking, you're doing it wrong right now. So with that, you know, go for it. All right, hello everyone. Uh, thank you to Besides KC for accepting the talk. Uh, I really like using the map, so I'm glad to present over it. So of course my talk is uh, from port scanning to password cracking. If you're not using the map, you're doing IT wrong. And I always throw in an in want to do other stuff in all of my talks. Disclaimer, all of these are my own, and this information, uh, if you use it, I'm not responsible, so if you break things in your environment, you get arrested, you go to jail, don't hold me responsible. Or me <laughs> <laughs> A little bit about me, I'm a security analyst at a large data company. I'm GCIH certified, I've over 10 years in the IT industry, starting from the ground up, help desk, sysadmin, to now security. I live in Columbia, Missouri, yeah. And then also, I'm a very proud father, so it's time to show off my girls in presentation if you want to. Uh, how many people here use InMap or InMap is? Great, majority. For those who don't know, this is a security scanner, so you can do port discovery, you can do service discovery, you can do uh, a bunch of things on there. So, but did you know that InMap can also brute force and crack passwords? You can check elite ciphers on uh, websites, and you can also check for some signed certificates. You can see if your host and your network is vulnerable to the uh, WannaCry. And then also you can run some exploits as well, as well as some fuzzy, app fuzzy applications. Right. So you're probably asking, well, how does it do that? How does it go beyond just port scan? So InMap it has a built-in NSC scripting engine. And this is a list of scripts developed by the community. So they take all the basic you know, exploitation routes, discovery scripts, and they take those and write those in the Lua language. And so there's hundreds of scripts for use, and it's really fun to kind of go look and see what you can do with InMap. That is just a screenshot of tip of the iceberg of all the InMap scripts are on there. There's literally hundreds of scripts that have different technologies and different uses. So the question is, uh, for those who don't know how to use InMap, how do you get started? Well, first of all, you need to have permission. If you're going to use this within your environment, you get signed off from your boss, from your boss's boss, from the team that you'll be scanning your devices with. Make sure you get that documented somewhere. Uh, you will also need a host, whether it be Windows, Linux. You can also run some Docker as well. Uh, I like to use Mac and Linux because I think that that works better. It's easier to get here. And you also need the NMAP software. <coughs> Some other things, uh, some scripting experience, if you're a sysadmin, you know, you can use Bash or you can use PowerShell <coughs> files. Uh, some be familiar with command line, it doesn't really matter which one. And then if you don't have command line experience, I like to say there's a GUI for that, because there is. In Mac comes compact with the GUI, so if you'd like to click on buttons and see pretty graphs, you can do that. And what's nice, this will create a topology graph for you uh, network admins. So we are just going to go over some basic nmap commands. It's pretty simple, just nmap and then your host, whether that be an IP address, a site or range, or a host name. And then the scan below that is that that's a little bit speedier scan, and that dash A will give you OS detection and also some details. And then my favorite, any nmap command when I start out, I do the SV, that is showing the service running on the board and the version of it, so that would be the whole vulnerable versions of that service. <coughs> and that's what this scan looks like. So as you can see, you can see what ports are open, what ports are filtered, from the basic in-map scan. And then we added the dash A and the dash T4. We get a little bit more details. We get the SSH host keys. We get the uh, certificate check. We also get the uh, OS detection as well. And that, we add the T4 actually speeds the scan up as well. But again, my favorite command is just SV and the host name. Again, it tells you all the versions of what ports it's running out of as far as the software is concerned. And that's really good for looking for like out of date, you know, DSFTP, Apache servers, and what have you. So, useful in my command. So, if you want to take all this information, you want to output it to a file, you can do that with the O capital, capital N. That will create a text file. You can also do it for XML if you like to parse things through there. Script kitty language, and also you can do it for a graphical format for all your Linux admins. <coughs> and if you want to do all three formats, you can do a dash O capital A. And then if you want to feed a target list to InMap, all you got to do is a dash lowercase i capital L, 
and you can see in that mix and match post list of you know, the insider ranges, post names, IP addresses. And that's really nice if you have a big target list. And then if you want to scan your environment for IPv6 hosts, which it should be a thing now, uh, you can just add the dash six, and that's pretty simple on that. But before moving on, I do want to remember the disclaimer, because we are going to go over a few things as far as brute, brute, brute forcing is concerned, and I'm dead serious about this. So I am not held responsible for what you do with this information. Even if you're just playing around, you can get in trouble with this. So after that being said, let's have some fun. So we are going to invoke the brute force script uh, on server. And to do this, we're, gonna, we're just going to scan the website, which is evil's IPW. I own that website, by the way, so I'm not doing anything illegal. And then we take a look at the output, and we see, oh great, we have Telnet open. Who has Telnet open nowadays? I have no clue, but this uh, server administrator does. So I was like, all right, he's got a user protocol open. Let's go ahead and try to brute force it. So how we're going to do that first is we're going to create a list of usernames and common passwords. And of course, I do that. Admin, <coughs> admin. Administrator, Bill, and Roots. Uh, there's a lot of Bill system administrators. I don't know why. Passwords. <laughs> All the common passwords. And you have a sandwich. <laughs> so we are again. We have after that we invoke the telnet dash root script built in with nmap. And so that is the command line arguments. And what you got and after you pass them through your username, user list, and your password list. You, you attack the host, look at that. We just brute force the telnet protocol. That's pretty simple, pretty easy to do, but it's something fun you can do with a map. <coughs> and illegal, so it'll be a problem. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some more brute forcing scripts. You can actually brute force SSH, MySQL, Postgres logins. You can brute force LDAP and SMB protocols, the Windows. And then also there's plenty more you can do as far as brute force is concerned, so go ahead and check out the website. So if we go back to the host, what else was listening on there? Well, 443, so obviously it's a web server. So my inclination is to check the certificate, see if it's expired, see if it's signed with a weak key, and maybe so there's some weak protocols. So to do that, we are gonna do inmap and script and maybe SSL cert. Look at that. Yeah, it's totally not a self-signed cert, you know, for his uh, TLS connections. And this is really good. I actually use this in my environment too because we get developers who are really snarky and want to test things all the time because they're developers, but they do not remove their self-signed certs, and so I just sweep my entire network using the script and see what hosts have that. So we see he has a self-signed cert. Surely the cert has some weak side first. I'm just I'm guessing. Back here. So we invoke the nmap script, the SSL enum ciphers in the host. And as you can see, TLS 1.0, three dead ciphers, they're all enabled. And nmap will tell you what warnings there is, like three dead is vulnerable, sweep 32, weak ciphers enabled, and the action creates as well. And that's really handy. So a little bit of trivia. TLS is vulnerable to what? Anybody know? Raise your hand if you know what attack. Is that Mark? Poodle. Who said Poodle? Poodle. I, I'll buy whoever said that a beer tonight. So, oh, you a beer? It is the Poodle attack. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. So again, we test the TLS, we test the certificate, and by the way, you can invoke multiple scripts on the same command line. And so, why we're doing this all over again? I would just put the same scripts with common. There you go. And actually, I have the dash key for the port. So if you're running like a Tomcat on a certain port, you can also check that as well. <coughs> Here's some in advanced in map stuff. I don't really dive deep into this, but it's some stuff you can do. You can build your own scripts yeah, using different programming languages, whether that be Bash or Python or whatever you want to use. You can actually build NSC scripts themselves. And so I have an idea for this of like taking some common things like dropping information to Slack, write it in Lua, and then create an NSC script for it. I haven't done that yet, but that's on the list. You can actually automate tasks. So if you want to take some of these commands, do you have an environment where ports should not be open? You can actually, I would set up a cron job, test that environment port scan, and then it will be a Slack 
if that port does come open. And I'll show you that in a second. And then you just contribute to the community by building your own scripts. It's, Blue is kind of an interesting language. Uh, it's kind of fun to get into, and then you get frustrated once you hit roadblocks. I uh, kind of like C, it's very similar to that. Or you, if, you're C, if you're familiar with C, go ahead and run C because you can't afford to use it. Again, this is just a bash script, and all we're doing, we're trying to detect what internal ports have changed. And then we're taking that and we're setting it up as a cron job. So that'll run every 15 minutes, and we're going to drop the information into Slack. And that's what that looks like. Which that's really handy, that's what? 15 lines of code, and then you've got that, you just <laughs> uh, another really good thing that I like to use is uh, alongside with my other tools, uh, you can use InMap for vulnerability, me, vulnerability detection. And all you have to do is invoke the uh, vuln script. As I see the commands up there. You can also check for WannaCry host. Um, this was when WannaCry was big last year. That was, that was written pretty quick and it was really helpful for us because we had all the hands on deck. We, I think we had to resolve with that a day, if not half the day because of that script. And then also you can check for the infamous, you know, MSO8067. I don't know if he's running that right now, but I know there is. It's an unpatched Windows 2003 server. But. And that's what, sorry, yeah. That is the vulnerability detection script in Pokemon Inmap, so it'll go through some basic vulnerability checks. Uh, don't use that to replace your vulnerability scanner, just use it as another tool. This one is, yeah, this is continuing on from the end of the vulnerability script. That is the output from the WannaCry one, which is really, like I said, really helpful for us. Again, uh, I've kind of moved through this, but I hope you got some information, but some disclaimers on this tool is that InMap is controversial. Uh, you know, it's either you're giving hackers more tools to get in your environment, or you have better tools to audit your environment. I'm kind of mixed a little bit of both, but I kind of, I feel it's a good tool that everybody, any IT professional on just security should use. Uh, if you do use this and you, by accident, or even with intentional purposes, you can and will go to jail. They will arrest you. They log your IP and you ignore the warnings and be arrested for tampering. Um, quick note, I didn't touch on this, but if you have, if you put this in AWS, make sure you get permission because if you don't, they will shut down your AWS account, your corporate account. It's a, I've seen it before. We uh, I've heard people get their two hundred thousand dollar account shut down. And when they're in the uh, president's <laughs> office, describing why because it was scanned. Is that a personal experience? No, 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 not personal experience. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, again, you, know, you always give permission when you're running this tool. Like that, that's the number one thing about, about doing that. So, summary, uh, again, everybody should use MMAP. It's free, it's widely supported. You know, we have a huge community. Uh, it's not a huge learning curve. You can go download it after this talk and start playing with it. And then last but not least, it, it's it's fun. This is fun to do. I love this. This is my favorite tool of all security tools because it's so simple, it's easy to use, and easy to teach. Just resources in my website, the NC Docs, and also the little programming language. Uh, thanks so much. Hope you guys learned something. And uh, it's time for lunch. So by the way, just uh, about the general comment, uh, if anybody ever think about being a CISO or leading the security for their company, I have a CISO by the way, uh, but it's a publicly traded company, I just had a conversation with a former Department of Justice Prosecutor uh, at RSA this week, and uh, he actually said that a publicly traded company can, and in some cases, will throw you out of the security security for the company. So there are lots of regulations out there, so if, you, if you're interviewing for a job like that, make sure they include you the under their uh, the boss policy. Of bosses. Because if everybody is going to be prosecuted at some point, you want them to pay for that. So just make sure you have a I didn't know about that. <laughs> Thank you.